righteousness. Dead trying to live for God without the indwelling of Christ. And if you try to live this Christian life without the indwelling of Christ, you're going to fail. You're not going to be successful. We, we talked about that during our, our 40 days of, of prayer. Paul was dead to the world's ways. He was dead to the world's attitude. He was alive, however, to Christ. So you can be dead in some things and alive in another. He was dead to sin and the works of the flesh, but he was alive to the Holy Spirit. He was dead to disobedience and alive toward obedience. Romans 8, uh, verse 10, turn with me there as we prepare to close. Romans 8. The Bible says, and if Christ be in you, the body is what? Dead. So there's a, a, a metaphor for the crucifixion. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of what? Sin. But the spirit of life is life because of righteousness. So where, where sin abounds, grace much more abounds. Verse 12, and if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to live for the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if you live after the flesh, ye shall die. But if you, through the Holy Spirit, do mortify the deeds of the body, and that's what Paul did, he didn't feed his carnal nature, right? He didn't play with sin. He said, if you mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So brothers and sisters, there's a train that's about to leave. There's a train leaving, and this train is headed for the kingdom of God. And the opportunity is available for us to get on board. The conductor is crying, come, let us reason together. This world is about to be destroyed, but the conductor is saying, come, come, get on this train. It, it is an escape route. And the only way to get on this train is to have a ticket. But it's not a physical ticket you can see or you can show. But it is a ticket that's written in your character. And this ticket has already been purchased by the blood of Christ. And this ticket not only takes us at the end of time, to his heavenly kingdom. But this ticket also translates us into his spiritual kingdom. So not only do you have blessings in the hereafter, you've got blessings now. And I want to ask you, brothers and sisters, do you have this blessing in you? This something within me that holds the rain, something that makes you smile when you want to cry? Do you have something within you that keeps you up when you should be down? Do you have something within you that uplifts you when life's burdens and trials are trying to pull you down? Do you have something within you that when the storms of life begin to confront you, you got something to hold back on? When the doctor says you've got so many days or months to live, do you have something within you that will sustain you? Do you have something within you if, God forbid, your husband or your, your spouse or wife says, I'm, I'm leaving? Do you have something that will keep you grounded, keep you in your right mind, Something that would keep you from the bottle or drugs? Do you have something within you? When life's major catastrophe is about to happen, 
And brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you that there's no age limit to having that, that power within you. I was just reading about the, and there's a young lady on the cover of, of uh, Adventist World. And you all know her, Samantha Brady, was on the news uh, at the Douglas High School in Florida uh, when she and her best friend started to hear shots and the, the shots, uh, gunfire started to get louder and louder and pretty soon she saw the door open and this gunman began to shoot in the classroom. She's seeing fellow students shot, some mortally wounded. She's watching bullets ricochet off the ground and hit students. And one of our friends says, look, why don't you just hold up a book to protect yourself? And so she did that, but the shots just kept on coming. Pretty soon she felt something and the, she felt her friend fall on her. Others were getting shot and getting, getting hit. But she had the, the clarity of mind to dial 911. She didn't panic or anything. They put her in the ambulance, brothers and sisters. And in the ambulance, get this, she started singing, God will take care of you. God will take care of you, whatever be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath his wings of love abide. God will take care of you. God will take care of you every day or the way. He will take care of you. God will take care of you. And she ended up in the hospital, was treated for her wounds. Brothers and sisters, what is it that inside of a person, after experiencing so much trauma, to say, God will take care of you. She was not just singing to herself, she was singing to everybody around. And brothers and sisters, I claim to you that that is the mystery of God, Christ in you. She had Christ dwelling in her. And brothers and sisters, I don't know what emergency you're gonna face in the future, but do you have the resolve that you could fall back on? Do you have a relationship with, with, with Christ? Is he dwelling inside of you? He not only died for us, but he's made it possible for him to actually live in us. To help you out with day-to-day -day stuff. Day-to-day -day stresses and anxieties and irritations and annoyances. So that when people are chewing funny, you could, or loud, you can be patient. People are acting funny, you can be, you can act like a child of God. Only the one who has Christ dwelling in, within, can exercise patience. Patience in the home, patience with the ch children, patience with the husband, patience with the wife. Patience in the church, you got to have something within. And Paul says, examine yourselves. Just look at your conduct. Look at the way you reacted. And that'll give you an idea of whether Christ is dwelling within. Do you reach for some self-medication to calm your nerves? Instead of dwelling and appreciating the promises that he gave. He's able to keep us from falling, brothers and sisters. But he's got to dwell within. So my appeal this morning, you want special prayer that Christ will set up shop invisibly but manifestedly in your body. And he says, all you got to do is ask. Are you willing to ask? Do you want him to dwell in you? Okay, if, if you really want that, I'm going to invite you to stand. I'm saying today, by my standing, I want Christ 
to dwell in me. Because none of us know what we're going to face tomorrow. You're going to need a shock absorber. You're going to need someone to go with you. You need to understand that God will take care of you. You don't need nobody else. You don't need a cigarette. You don't need a joint. You don't need Sherman. You, you don't need PCP. You don't need alcohol. God will take care of you. Let us pray. Father, we're standing because we're recommitting ourselves to you and your power. We don't know what's ahead, what's in the future. But I know that trials have a funny way of finding us unprepared. And so, Lord, we want to examine ourselves and we want to get back on the horse. Get back to praying and get back to studying the, the word, get it, getting back to developing our relationship with you. We need you, O oh Lord, to make known the mystery among the Gentiles, the surpassing greatness of Christ consenting to dwell in the lives of human beings who have been degraded and who were the subjects of sin and now translated into his marvelous kingdom. So we ask that you would use us and that you would supply all of our needs and give us the power of your Holy Spirit to treasure when you dwell, Lord, to not take credit and not try to work our way and to do good on our own, but to allow you to do the good. Help us to live righteousness by faith. Knowing, oh God, you're the only one can save us. And if you had not died, then nothing we do is going to make any difference. But Lord, we take assurance today that because you died, we can now die to sin. We can die in our bodies. And so we pray that you take our lives, Lord, shape them. Give us the guidance. Give us the counsel. You speak through us. You direct us. You help us make decisions. In fact, make the decisions for us, O oh God, and help us to be so in tune with you that we hear your voice so that life can become simplified and not complex. Help us, O oh God, not to always want to be first. Help us not to be contentious or cantankerous. Help us, O oh Lord, to be humble. Remove pride from our hearts, O oh Lord. You can't dwell where pride is, so clear it out, O oh Lord. Sweep that out of our lives and then come and dwell in us because you're looking for clean temples. We only give you permission. We can't clean ourselves, but only you can do that. So dwell in us, Lord. Wash us and cleanse us. Your blood has given you the right to do it, O oh God, and so we appeal on the basis of your shed blood. We thank you, O oh Lord, for the cross. We thank you for uh, uh, going that distance for people who were your enemies. And sometimes we're your enemies, O oh Lord. Even in the church, we sometimes are enemies against you. Help us, O oh Lord. If you're dwelling in us, the church will move on. If you're dwelling on us, the, uh, in us, the family will move on. If you're dwelling on us, Lord, uh, uh, we'll, we'll be good workers. And help us, O oh Lord. To remember to put you first in everything because sometimes even putting you first will bring us into contention but Lord may your grace sustain us help us to be like uh, the psalmist who says yea though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I know the Lord will be with me help us not to fear death but help us to look forward to the resurrection and the promise of eternal life which you've uh, died to purchase for all of us we thank you for hearing us O oh lord continue to bless us seal your holy spirit in us today 
deepen our convictions today. Let us not leave this church being the same. Sanctify us, O oh God. Make us better. Make us more needy, needful of your, your presence and your spirit. We want to abide with you. We need fruit, Lord. We can't have fruit unless you abide in us, unless you dwell in us. And then, Lord, may you come and take your church, because you're looking for a church without spot or wrinkle. Prepare us, Lord, for your return. In Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated.